Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and this will be a continuation from a previous video, uh, this video here, where we looked at a study done by the Bank of Canada, and they were looking at the potential impacts during the Trump administration of a tariff being imposed on Canadian exports. In that video, we looked, uh, we just reviewed how to illustrate, analyze, evaluate a per unit tariff, in this case, on the U.S. national economy. I have another video that goes into the detail there. But the point of the video was to show what's the connection between how a trade protection uh, policy, which is meant to be an expenditure switching policy, where by imposing the tariff, you're getting, in this case, U.S. consumers to switch away from Canadian imports to U.S. domestic goods, um, how that trade protections policy can affect the exchange rate. And in that study by the Bank of Canada, um, they were able to demonstrate that potentially trade protections by the U.S. would cause the U.S. dollar to appreciate, which makes sense. Americans would be demanding less imports, thus supplying less of their dollars into the foreign exchange. And that would also have an impact on the Canadian dollar, where there's reduced demand by Americans for the Canadian dollar because they're reducing their demand for Canadian imports. But the study also highlights that if the Canadian dollar depreciates, that it might actually motivate American consumers to buy more Canadian imports because the stronger dollar, the appreciated dollar, will make the Canadian imports cheaper. If you're curious about that study, I'm referring to uh, this study here, tariffs and exchange rate evidence from Twitter. They were looking at Donald Trump tweeting that he would potentially impose tariffs on either Mexico or Canada which are part of the North American Free Trade Agreement. Um, and then you could look at the study itself and in the abstract, it just sums up. This paper examines the conjecture that an increase in tariffs in a flexible exchange rate regime or free floating exchange rate leads to the appreciation of the domestic currency, or in this case, the US currency. We focus on the reaction of the exchange rate markets uh, to tweets by US President Donald Trump regarding possible tariff increases on Canadian and Mexican goods. And the study highlights that there's uh, the anticipation of trade restrictions by perhaps investors in the foreign exchange market led to the US dollar appreciating by 0.023% and 0.051% against the Canadian Mexican dollar. So in this video, I want to illustrate um that impact from the export side so here we have that model of the us and i'm going to change this and show this from the canadian perspective all right so we're going to kind of start over here i'm going to i'm going to keep the two exchange rate models because the consequence of the trade protectionist policy will be the same i'm just going to take this model and make it from the Canadian point of view. All right, so you can see me draw this step by step, and then we'll graph and analyze it, and then see how it connects to the value of the US dollar and the uh, Canadian dollar in the foreign exchange rate. Okay, we're almost there. So even though um, this model is not necessarily part of the IB syllabus, perhaps on an internal assessment, you can illustrate the impact of a tariff for the importing country, but you can also illustrate the impact of a tariff for the exporting country. And that's what we're going to draw here. Okay, so I'm going to go up and then change this. I'll label this graph B, uh, Canadian national economy. So here, graph B, so I could, oh, A, B, C, no, I'll, I'll label this graph A then, keep that consistent. So here we have graph A, and then I'll put the Canadian national economy. With the applied per unit tariff by the US. So the US is imposing a uh, per unit tariff against Canada. So we're going to illustrate the supply 
in the domestic economy for Canada. So we'll label that supply in the domestic economy for Canada. And then we'll illustrate the demand, the domestic demand in Canada. DD, domestic demand one. And then we have that equilibrium just for the sake to illustrate. Um, we have that Canadian market equilibrium providing a price here. And we're going to assume that Canada has the comparative advantage, so the world price is going to be set above that point. Thus, they will export. So I'll put a world price perhaps up here. Okay, so we have world price for a particular good, perfectly elastic, so that becomes our world supply curve. And we see that the Canadian domestic uh, price equilibrium is below the world price, they have lower cost of production, they have the comparative advantage, so they are going to export. And their exports will be this quantity here. Quantity of demand being reduced, quantity of supply increasing, Canadian firms increasing output. And we're just gonna label this Q1 to Q4. And then I'm gonna highlight that that is the quantity of exports before the imposition of the US tariff. So these are, I'm sorry, exports. These are exports by Canada before the US tariff. Okay. Um, then what happens? The US imposes or potentially might impose that tariff. So the price received by Canadian firms will fall. They don't get to keep the tax revenue. So we'll have another price set down here. So I'll label that PW minus the tariff. And that will be the world supply curve minus the tariff. So since the price received by Canadian firms uh, is decreased, Canadian firms will thus reduce the quantity of supply along their supply curve. So the quantity of supply is being reduced and Canadian firms are gonna potentially fire excess resources like labor. So we're going from point A to let's say point B. Because of the lower price received, that allows Canadian consumers to increase their consumption, let's say from point C all along their demand curve, quantity demand increasing to point D. So here we have a reduced quantity of exports, which I'll show here. Okay. So here we have Q2, and then here we have Q3. So we're going to illustrate that this is the reduced quantity of exports after, and then before it was this. Okay, so these were Canadian exports before, exports before the government intervention, US intervention imposing that tariff and here we have exports after I can also go ahead and label areas that can help me with my analysis so we can have area a b c oh, I can also do this bring this up here bring this up here to show the welfare loss a b c d area e F, G, H, I, and J, okay? So there I've drawn a tariff impacting the exporting country, highlighting the reduced price received by Canadian firms, the reduced quantity of supply, and the increased quantity of demand. Since Canada will be exporting less in theory, Americans will be supplying less of their currency into the foreign exchange market. 
Thus, we see in this market for US dollars, the supply for US dollars decreasing from S1 to S2, causing the appreciation of the US dollar. And because Canada will be exporting less to the US, there'll be less demand for the Canadian dollar by Americans. So the, Cana the demand for Canadian dollars decreases from D3 to D4, leading to its depreciation from E3 to E4. All right. Um, so I'm just going to analyze this model, again, connected to graphs B and C. And then we can talk uh, about a few things, and we'll wrap this up. So uh, we're going to be looking at the consequences of a trade protectionist policy on exchange rates. In graph A, we're looking at the Canadian national economy impacted by an applied per unit tariff by the United States. Although Canada is part of the North American Free Trade Agreement under the Trump administration, there were potential maybe threats by the Trump administration that they would uh, impose tariffs against Canada and or Mexico. Um, in graph B, we have the market for US dollars, and in graph C, we have the market for Canadian dollars. Graph A on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity of Canadian goods uh, demanded and supplied, and on the y-axis, we're measuring the price or value of those Canadian goods. We have an upward sloping supply curve, according to law supply, in the domestic economy, labeled SD1, supply in the domestic economy for Canada, downward sloping demand curve for Canadian goods, labeled DD1 according to the law of demand, and where SD1 equals DD1, it provides an equilibrium um, price in that economy. Canada opens up to world trade. They accept the world price at PW. The world price is greater than the domestic price, so Canada will export. Because of that higher price, Canadian firms can increase the quantity of supply to point A, or Q4. At that higher price, though, it reduces the quantity demanded by Canadian consumers to point C or Q1. Thus, initial exports by Canada is of a quantity of Q4 minus Q1 being exported to the United States. At that point, we can illustrate the producer surplus by Canadian firms. The producer surplus would be following the supply curve up to the world price. And would include areas A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. So I can make a note of that. I can make a note of initial, perhaps, initial producer surplus being equal to areas B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G plus H plus I plus J. The initial consumer surplus is just area A. Okay. Then the Trump administration may potentially impose tariffs tariffs would have the effect of reducing the price received by Canadian exporting firms from PW to PW minus the tariff. The firm is not able to keep that tax revenue. It's going to the U.S. government. So that causes also the world supply curve to decrease from SW, SW minus tariff. That has the effect of decreasing the quantity supplied by Canadian firms from point A to point B or from Q4 to Q3. The lower price uh, within the can Canadian economy also leads to an increase in the quantity demanded from point C to point D, or from Q1 to Q2. Thus, final exports become a quantity, a reduced quantity of Q3 minus Q2. Okay. That will reduce the consumer surplus to areas G, H, I, J. So Canadian firms are worse off as a result of that imposed tariff by the United States. So I'll make a note of that. Here we have the final producer surplus for these Canadian firms being equal to areas G, plus H, plus I, plus J. You can also mention uh, 
how total revenue for those firms uh, decreased. We have the initial total revenue, I'll just call that TR1, is equal to PW times Q4. PW times Q4 is the total total revenue. And then it goes down to, let's say, total revenue two equal to PW minus the tariff. times a reduced quantity of Q3. So total revenue two is less than the initial total revenue one, all right? A lower price times a lower quantity, a reduced total revenue. So they're worse off, lo lo uh, less total revenue and uh, reduced producer surplus. On the other hand, for Canadian consumers, their consumer surplus increases and now includes areas A plus B plus C. So increased savings for them. And then we have area E, which is tariff revenue for the US government. All right, make a note there, there's the tariff revenue. And then areas D and F become welfare losses. We lose the ability of Canadian firms that have the comparative advantage to produce, they're also productively efficient. They're reducing, scaling back their production. They're not, we're not allocating resources to them because they're, uh, even though they're productively efficient. So that is a welfare loss. And then we have increased consumption by Canadian farmers, area D being that welfare loss. Um, although these Canadian consumers should not be consuming it. It should be exported to the US and consumed by US consumers in theory. Fine. So there we have our analysis and evaluation. Um, let's connect this to the exchange rate. So aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And that US tariff is going to reduce Canadian exports. That reduction in Canadian exports is going to lead to, in graph B, the reduced supply of US dollars because Americans will be supplying less of their dollars into the foreign exchange, um, causing the supply of US dollars to decrease from S1 to S2, causing its value to increase from E1 to E2. So that is an appreciation of the US dollar. And because Can Canadians will be exporting less to the United States, they'll lead to reduced demand for Canadian exports, mm -hmm. leading to reduced demand for the Canadian currency. So in graph C, demand for the currency decreases from D3 to D4, reducing its value from E3 to E4, causing a depreciation of the Canadian dollar. In the long run though, with a weaker Canadian dollar, that will make Canadian exports cheaper, the cheaper substitute in the global market. So potentially Americans could actually demand more of those Canadian um, exported goods because the weaker Canadian dollar makes it cheaper to the American consumer. So that's perhaps a long run impact. And again, in this report here, it highlighted that, that the U.S. trade protectionist policy uh, exchange rate appreciation of the dollar may mitigate, may reduce the expenditure switching intended by the U.S. Uh, Trump administration. The intent of the uh, policy is to increase import prices so that Americans buy more U.S. produced goods. But if the U.S. dollar appreciates, that makes the dollar stronger, makes imports cheaper, and Canada could potentially in the long run be exporting more with that weaker dollar. Okay, so that's um, some connections that we can make between trade protectionist policies and exchange rates. If you are discussing something like this in your internal assessment, this could be part of your evaluation, bringing up in your evaluation, how trade protectionist policies affect the exchange rate value of the domestic and foreign currency. If you have any questions, you can feel free to comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.